Hello class, today we're going to be looking at motion and force. So first we'll give some definitions here. Force is a push or a pull one object puts on another object. So um, really anything you can think of there with um, a pushing force if you were to push someone or push a table or push your book across the desk. Um, or a pull if you um, are in a tug of war or something like that. So you're pulling an object or pushing an object. Balanced forces are forces that are equal in size and opposite in direction. So nothing moves, and that's kind of the key part here. Um, no movement occurs in a balanced force. And an unbalanced force shows a net force, which means that there is movement. Forces are unequal in size, and they cause a change in motion. So the object moves in one direction or another. Unbalanced forces always change the velocity of the object. So down here outside the screen probably that you can see, it says velocity of the object. It will always change the velocity. So here's some examples. A balanced force pushing on each other. Notice the arrows are equal in size, opposite in direction. A balanced force of opposite in direction, the pulling force. So these are equal in size, opposite in direction again. So our um, one, if you, top one up there could be like pushing against a wall. Um, bottom one would be pulling against um, somebody in a tug of war maybe. Unbalanced forces showing displacement of the object. So in this one, our blue force is greater than our red force. And so we see this is the movement here of the object. It will go in that direction in a small distance. Um, even though the force was great, the distance is not that far because distance moved because we had this force that it was trying to overcome. And then at unbalanced forces where they add up to displace the object in one direction. So on this one, we're taking our red force here and our blue force here and adding them up and getting this purple movement of the object. We also have here um, two objects that are pulling against each other. So our red and our blue, you can see that the blue is greater. And so the object is going to move in that direction. Go back here. Um, another example, force is a vector that tells you strength and direction of the push or pull. So we will show force arrows to show um, how much uh, force is being put on the object, either a push or a pull. So forces that act on objects. We're going to go through five of these here. So we have the normal force, which is a support force. Um, an example. Um, when there's a book on a table. So one object is in contact with a stable object. So that stable object being the table, um, you and your chair right now would be an example of a normal, there would be an, a normal force on you. A tension force is a force that's transmitted through a string, rope, or cable. So you can kind of make sense of that with tension. You're putting tension on something. Um, three, gravitational force is the force of attraction to a large object in the universe. So we have gravity towards Earth. A friction force is the force that opposes motion between two surfaces. And we'll be doing some labs with that later on in this chapter. Also, the gravitational force, we'll be looking at some of that. We have a virtual lab we're going to look at with that. Um, and then we'll be doing some accelerated motion, unbalanced force labs that we'll be doing in class as well. So this is what they look like. Um, if we have an object sitting still, uh, this box that's sitting still on the table, the normal force is in blue, so that's the force um, that the table is putting up on the box. And let's do this here. In blue, blue, we have the normal force is the force of the table upward on the book or the box. The purple is the gravitational force and that is going to be equal and opposite to that normal force. It's going to be balanced until the object starts moving. The friction force is going to be between the two surfaces. So the surface of the box and the surface of the table, um, there's a friction force that's in there. If you push the object um, one direction or the other, you have to overcome friction in order to get it to move.
Now the purple gravitational force works opposite of the normal force and in this case it's equal and opposite. If it was, um, if gravitational force was greater, if it continued down like this, then the gravitation, this box would not sit on the table, it would come through the table. If for instance the normal force was greater than gravity, the object would float. Just to give you an idea of what that would look like. So um, these right here in the sliding picture um, just kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking at. So in the person in red has a normal force straight up and down, straight up, and gravity straight down. So this person in red has balanced forces and is not moving. There's no sliding happen, which is what is represented here. The forces are equal and opposite, so I don't slide. In this particular one with the yellow shirt girl here, um, the normal force is going off in a little bit different direction because she is on a slide and it's at an angle. The normal force is going to show that angle. Um, gravity is still down and so at this point this girl is able to slide because her normal force, looking at these vectors and how they add up, and her gravitational force are not equal and completely opposite. So they will allow her to slide on this particular example. If we look at tension force pictures here, um, the tension in this case is equal and opposite. Tension going um, with that string or rope um, being equal and opposite there, so they're not moving. And then we also can see a tension force in this bridge picture at the bottom. Okay, and then friction force to show some examples of that. Friction works opposite of you pushing or pulling. Um, so when you have two objects that are uh, touching each other, friction opposes motion. Um, so in this case with the bicycle, we have the force acting on the road by the bicycle is going to be in red. Okay, we have friction acting on the bicycle to oppose its motion. And that's what you have to overcome when you are riding a bike or running or doing any type of motion activity. You have to overcome these forces. And then green is the reaction force acting on the bicycle by the road. It's called friction as well, which allows you to move forward. If you didn't have friction at all on Earth, we would not be able to move at all. We'd be sliding around everywhere, I guess. But we wouldn't be able to um, overcome uh, or be able to go the way we do now. So friction actually helps us to move, but it also can oppose motion. So we'll be looking at that a little bit in some labs. Going over friction just a little bit more, it is a force that opposes motion between two surfaces that are touching. We have two types, static, which is friction between surfaces that are stationary, and kinetic friction between moving surfaces. So it can be sliding or rolling when we're looking at kinetic friction. Obviously something that's rolling has less friction. It's easier to move um, something that's on wheels versus something that does not have wheels. So if we want to increase or decrease the friction that is happening, you can use, um, if you want to increase it, you can use a rough surface. So for example, if you're cleaning something, you can clean something with um, a sponge that has um, maybe more rough edges to it to help you clean, increase the friction. And then decreasing friction, you can add a liquid like oil or WD-40. Okay, that's the end of our notes on motion and force.